me to do this. Um, and this is for Admiral Ray uh, and the background. One of the essential functions of this committee is to exercise oversight of the executive branch agencies over which we have legislative jurisdiction. Through thorough oversight is required for Congress and this committee to develop effective legislation that benefits the American taxpayers and meets our security requirements. It has come to our attention that the Trump administration, in an opinion from the Office of Legal Counsel, has determined that only, only the chairman of the committee or subcommittee of jurisdiction may exercise the oversight functions of that committee. Further, the opinion instructs that an agency should not consider an oversight request from any other member of Congress, including the ranking member of the committee or subcommittee with jurisdiction, as an inquiry requiring a response. It states that the agency may exercise its own discretion in determining whether to respond to these inquiries from the minority. Therefore, Admiral Ray, is it the policy of the Coast Guard to respond substantively to oversight inquiries made by the ranking member of this committee or subcommittee? Sir, I'm not familiar with the uh, policy that you refer to, but I'm familiar with our practice in the service of responding to subcommittees and committees, and uh, we pride ourselves on being responsive. And we have a team of, uh, of folks here that you recognize, three of them today, they make sure we get the questions, and then they make sure that we get the answers back, and we have processes for that. I, I'm not aware of any uh, way that we uh, uh, separate the questions depending on the origin. If they come from the Congress, we make it every attempt to answer it. I need not expand further how important I believe this issue is. Uh, and apparently, the Office of the Legal Counsel leaves it to the discretion of the agency. And I am pleased to hear that, as of now, your exercise of that discretion would allow the minority questions to be answered. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, then let me move on. Um, Ms. Mick, Mack, um, I thank you for your testimony. Uh, in its fullness, you, you seem to be stating that the current budget and appropriations for the Coast Guard significantly understates the requirements that the Coast Guard has to meet its uh, obligations. Is that correct? Absolutely, sir. The budget, the budget does not reflect realities. For example, if you look at the President's 2018 budget request, the OPCs cost almost half a billion, almost half of the acquisition budget. The FRCs, almost a quarter of the acquisition budget. So that leaves you a quarter left that does not address the 10th NSC, the FRC plus ups, the icebreakers, the service life extension for the medium endurance cutters, or the shore infrastructure, which we've already said is 1.6 billion in terms of uh, backlog. Have you developed the amount of money that would be necessary to meet those requirements? No, that's where we believe that the Coast Guard needs to develop their 20-year plan with the strategies, with the assets that they need to meet their missions and the cost that is required before trade-offs can be, begin to be discussed. Thank you for that setup. Now, Admiral Ray. <laughs> Sir, as our Commandant has stated uh, recently uh, before the subcommittee, uh, we have uh, um, established the program of record for the assets that we need, whether it's National security cutters, offshore patrol cutters, icebreakers, uh, uh, and various other assets. And to kind of summarize it, he stated uh, repeatedly, and, and we believe it puts us in good shape, to uh, have we need to get our the growth of our operations and maintenance budget, our daily O&M budget that we do to do operations, to be at least 5% per year. That's, a, that's something we haven't obtained. We've had a net 10% reduction in uh, 
in uh, purchase power or buying power of our O&M budget since 2010. We need a two, $2 billion predictable recurring ACNI budget to do acquisition. The, the setup question by Ms. Mack wasn't completely answered, so let me put it to you directly. Uh, I think it's the responsibility of this committee, and, I was just, and I'm almost certain that the chairman would agree, that we need to have a long-term vision, and we need to prepare the Coast Guard for its current and future tasks. Uh, in order for that to be done, the Congress must exercise its uh, authority and responsibilities to set the pace and to provide the money. We've not done so. In order for us to do so, we need to have from the Coast Guard your full requirements for funding to meet the program that is of record. Therefore, and I'll work this out with the chairman so that we could both ask the question for you to develop for us the money necessary uh, year by year going forward to fully address the requirements of the Coast Guard. And we're talking acquisition budget here. Uh, so that 20 years looking out there, which Ms. Mack just discussed, also Mr. Acton, in your testimony, you made a very forceful um, statement about the needs. Uh, it seems to me that it is time for us to fully uh, fund the requirements of the Coast Guard in, in every way, in all of the uh, acquisition programs, the program of record uh, in, uh, in its fullness, so that we know what it is the requirements are. We may or may not be able to meet that, but uh, our task is one of making choices. I said earlier, in my view, the Coast Guard is the wall. I believe we have some $2 billion that's going to be added to the ongoing physical wall on the terrestrial side. So we need to make a choice. Could we move $2 billion from the terrestrial wall to the, um, to the water? What would that do for the Coast Guard? So anyway, help us with this, and I, I'd, I'd like to work with the chairman to put forth a, uh, a request for the full funding over the next 20 years, year by year, to meet the full requirements, as Ms. Mack has stated it. So uh, with that, I'll yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the extra time. Thank the ranking member. And uh, once again, we're just happy to have people here. So I'm going to recognize the gentleman from Louisiana, Mr. Graves. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Emma Ray, I I'd love to talk to you a little bit about, uh, about acquisition strategy. and, and